Well, good morning, folks. Uh, welcome back to 3's End. Bobo here, recording from Madison, North Carolina now. About three months ago, we decided uh, to move south, and uh, Carolyn has a daughter that lives relatively close, so we thought, what the heck. Uh, we're about uh, 20 miles north of um, Greensboro. So for the last three months, we've been unpacking boxes and looking for things. Um, I don't know why movers have this, seem to think they have to play hide-and-seek when they move, but they do. At any rate, we're pretty well getting settled in. Uh, yards taking shape, uh, houses taking shape, and I finally found some time to come upstairs and share a few more stories with you. Uh, I was telling somebody the other day, the stories I share are not professional by any stretch of the imagination. These are stories that we would tell sitting around uh, flight rooms after flying, drinking beer, and just enjoying each other's company. So it's with that in mind, I hope you enjoy the stories, uh, hearing the stories as much as I do telling them. What I have to offer for you this morning is a story that I heard in Australia. I was uh, on exchange tour from um, July 1980 to July 1982. And uh, I really enjoyed that tour. At any rate, we're sitting around the office one morning drinking coffee, and um, these guys, a couple of these guys, uh, sh pitched in and shared this story about uh, a couple of guys up at uh, Raft Base Butterworth one evening. I think it was a pilot and a um, flight surgeon who were the principals in the story. Seems like these two guys had. Uh, decided to go over to the island of Penang, which is about a mile off the coast of uh, Malaysia, about two miles south of the base, somewhere in that area there. So they decided to, to head over there and go uh, bar hopping for the night just to see uh, what they could discover. And as they were over there getting well into the uh, artillery punch, uh, it finally dawned on them, hey, it's getting late, and we better get back to the uh, ferry, otherwise we're not going to get back to the mainland, we'll have to spend the night on the island. Well, okay then. So they head back, headed back to the pier just to uh, discover the last ferry from the mainland was tying up. The last ferry to the mainland had already left. So they walked over and found the little Chinese captain, um, securing the ship for the night and they tried to talk him into him into taking them back to uh, the mainland while well, he was having nothing of it so uh, he kept at his task of tying up the boat and these two guys uh, kind of looked at each other and well, I guess the question came up think we could drive this I'm well, sure why not so they walked back over to the captain stood there for a minute picked them up threw them overboard and uh, untied the boat, fired it up. I guess it might have still been run, I don't know. Anyway, they backed out, turned it around. Now, Raft Base Butterworth sits about a mile, mile and a half up the coast. So these guys thought, if we just drive over the pier, we're still going to need a way to get from the pier up to the, uh, the base. Well, why not just take the ferry? Uh, the officers club sat right on the beach, and they thought, we just put it on the beach. That would be fine. Um, save a lot of heartburn, they thought. So that's what they did. And they made a left-hand turn, drove up the coast a little bit, and then turned into the beach and beached it. Um, I imagine feeling proud of themselves. They got off the ferry, shut it down, or shut it down and got off the ferry, and then headed back to their respective rooms. Well, the next morning, as the guys were coming into the officers' club for breakfast, they couldn't help but notice this ferry sitting out on the beach. Not a usual sight. Usually they're going up and down. Anyway, they began to investigate, and it didn't take them too long to figure out what had happened. Uh, one thing led to another, and they finally found out who the principals were. And they uh, got them up, and they decided, you know, we need to get these two boys out of town. Uh, the Malaysians aren't going to take real keenly to this stuff. So they put them in the back of an airplane. I don't remember if it was a C-130 that went directly to Australia or a pair of Mirages. I don't know. At any rate, they stuck them on this airplane and got them out of town. 
because had they not done that, I don't think it would have worked out well for either one of these two. Anyway, just one of the stories I heard, another one of the stories I heard from Australia. Hope you enjoyed it, and um, it's good to see everybody back on uh, back in 3Zen. Thanks a lot for stopping by.